are the ingenious concoctions of raving movie lunatics. You want Nick and Amy to be likable. After that, you invent. The spending, the abuse, the fear, the threat of violence. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie villain evil plans. Using these lasers, we punch a hole in the protective layer around the world, which we call the ozone layer. For this list, we're focusing on the best and worst laid plans of evil movie villains. However, we're excluding impulsive acts of large-scale destruction, as the Joker so unforgettably demonstrated in The Dark Knight. Do I really look like a guy with a plan? And as you can expect, a few of these plans are revealed at climactic moments in their respective films, so a spoiler alert is probably in order. Yeah, be prepared! Yeah, we'll be prepared! <laughs> For what? For the death of the king. Why, is he sick? No, fool, we're gonna kill him. Number 10, Richmond Valentine, Auntie Steve Jobs, Kingsman The Secret Service. I always felt the old Bond films were only as good as the villain. So maybe selfie sticks are a bit annoying, but hey, at least they don't inspire violent reactions. Well, not yet at least. In Matthew Vaughn's stylish spy flick, a billionaire philanthropist shocks the public by distributing free cell phone and internet service. Free calls? Free internet for everyone. For everyone. But as you can imagine, based on the theme of this list, there's a twist. Richmond Valentine despises human beings and views humanity as a crippling virus to Earth that needs to be eradicated before the planet suffers irreparable damage. Global warming is the fever. Mankind is the virus. We're making our planet thick. A coal is our only hope. Like a true movie villain, he's loyal to a few pals, which means they receive protective chips in their domes. But everybody else? Nope. Remember, manners maketh man. Manners maketh man. Number 9. Dr. Evil, A Reasonable Demand, Austin Powers' International Man of Mystery. I've got you now, Dr. Evil. Not this time. Come, Mr. Bigglesworth! See you in the future, Mr. Powers. Back in the swinging 60s, a bald-headed maniac narrowly escaped a stylish spy known as Austin Powers. And when he returns from his cryogenic freeze to a wealthy lifestyle, well, he's not quite satisfied. Gentlemen, I have a plan. Perhaps suffering from brain damage and certainly not quite hip to modern times. I'm hip. Dr. Evil hopes to acquire a nuclear warhead and hold the world ransom. However, the plan has one major flaw. His ransom demand was rather reasonable. We get the warhead and we hold the world ransom for... One million dollars. In light of this embarrassment, Dr. Evil picks a number out of the sky and manages to outdo himself by making an even more hilarious, yet still undoubtedly evil demand. One hundred billion dollars. Blame it on the 30-year nap. But I've been frozen for 30 years, okay? Throw me a frickin' bone here. Number eight, Skynet, finish her, the Terminator. In technical terminology, he's a loon. You never quite know who you'll meet in Los Angeles. And it's not uncommon to learn of secret conspiracies. But as Sarah Connor discovers in James Cameron's sci-fi classic, sometimes they are speaking the truth. When Kyle Reese arrives from the future, he details the plot of an intelligence defense network called Skynet, which will not only threaten the human race, but also Sarah's future son, the leader of the human resistance. They say it got smart. A new order of intelligence. Then saw all people as a threat, not just the ones on the other side. Decided our fate in a microsecond. Yes, that is a lot for one woman to handle, but there's more. A cyborg assassin, the Terminator. Now that's evil. It can't be bargained with. It can't be reasoned with. It doesn't feel pity or remorse or fear. And it absolutely will not stop, ever until you are dead. Number seven, Simon Peter Gruber, Simon Says, Die Hard with a Vengeance. You are about to have a very bad day. Tell me about it. It's one thing to be a creepy movie villain, but what would such an evil person be without an equally creepy voice? 
I want to play a game. What kind of game? Simon Says. Seven years after the death of Hans Gruber, a mysterious man by the name of Simon emerged in New York City to thoroughly ruin John McClane's day. This guy wants to pound on you till you crumble. He wants you to dance to his tune and then... You dress and f*** me? <laughs> I was going to say, kill you. Hoping to rob the Federal Reserve Bank of $140 billion in gold, the prickly villain begins a dirty game of destruction for no other reason than to mess with his unknowing enemy for a little personal enjoyment. Well, actually, there was a legitimate reason, and it has something to do with this guy, a villain with an equally diabolical plan. Isn't brotherly love sweet? You know, your brother was an asshole. Ha! <laughs> hey, uh, he really he was, was an asshole. He was an asshole. You, you got his number. Number six, Palpatine, sneaky senator, the Star Wars prequel trilogy. Good, and he get good. Kill him. He's the senator from Naboo and one nasty looking dude. Call him Supreme Chancellor Palpatine or call him Darth Sidious. This is one evil politician. This force to be reckoned with originally appeared in The Empire Strikes Back. There is a great disturbance in the force. But it was in the prequel trilogy when his origin story was told in full. The Republic will be reorganized into the first Galactic Empire! When a state of emergency presents itself, Palpatine makes sure that he's the one granted ultimate power. He plays the political game to perfection, as he manipulates both sides of the Clone Wars and effectively sets the plan in motion for Anakin Skywalker to embrace the darkness, a most palpable villain. Henceforth. You shall be known as Darth Vader. Number five, Ozymandias, a common enemy, Watchmen. I'm not a comic book villain. Do you seriously think I'd explain my masterstroke to you if there were even the slightest possibility you could affect the outcome? Well, well, well. Look who's conveniently taking refuge in Antarctica. As a retired superhero named Ozymandias, Adrian Veidt always has more than a few tricks up his sleeve and is constantly 10 steps ahead of everyone else. The only person with whom I felt any kinship died 300 years before the birth of Christ, Alexander of Macedonia, or Alexander the Great, as you know it. First, the comedian was bumped off. Then Dr. Manhattan exiled himself to Mars. Oh, and Veidt was nearly taken out himself. You bullshit assassin. You paid him to throw us off. Mr. Chess gave his life in the service of a higher cause, Dad. Unbeknownst to the Watchmen, it was all part of Ozymandias' plan to unite Americans and Soviets against a common enemy, which could only be accomplished with the destruction of every major city in the world. So in order to save this planet, I had to trick it. For the greatest practical joke in human history. Killing millions. To save billions. While the public falls into place out of fear, Ozymandias stands firm in his triumph. I've saved the Earth from hell. We both have. This is as much your victory as it is mine. Number four, Amy Elliott Dunn, Blood in the Water, Gone Girl. I am so much happier now that I'm dead. Love and marriage, secrets and betrayal, all make for a great witch hunt. When the subject of a children's book series goes missing, her husband becomes the prime suspect. Pool of blood and no body suggest homicide. It tells us to look at people inside the house, which is what we're doing here, Nick. However, behind the blatantly obvious is usually a plethora of lies. I will practice believing my husband loves me and will love this baby. That this child might really save our marriage. But I could be wrong. In this case, Amy Elliott Dunn isn't exactly right in the head. In order to get back at her unfaithful partner, she creates a painfully realistic web of domestic abuse, kidnap, and sexual deviance. And my lazy, lying, cheating, oblivious husband will go to prison for my murder. Needless to say, it works. And just like sharks, the media rips him to pieces as soon as they get a whiff of blood. Sir. Where's your wife, Nick? Let the police do their job. What did you do to your pregnant wife? Let's find... You tell Nick. You tell him Amy was six weeks pregnant. Number three, Lex Luthor, real estate, Superman. People are no damn good. 
but they will always need land and they'll pay through the nose to get it. While Clark Kent was saving cats and showing off his aerial skills, another man was developing an ingenious plan. Because all evil movie villains are typically, well, geniuses. How do you choose to congratulate the greatest criminal mind of our time? In this superhero flick, Lex Luthor is the supreme bad guy who hatches together a plot to make himself the leader of a new western world. Doesn't it give you kind of a, a, a shudder of electricity through you to be in the same room with me? How? By obliterating California and reaping the benefits of his wise real estate decisions, of course. Millions of innocent people would be killed. The west coast as we know it would fall into the sea. Bye-bye, California. Despite the well-formed business plan and Superman's reaction to kryptonite, Lex Luthor could not have known that the Man of Steel could alter the fate of the world through flight alone. Number 2. John Doe, Envy and Wrath, 7. Detective! You're looking for me. Like we said, evil movie villains tend to typically be geniuses, and this is one of the best. I'm setting the example. And what I've done is going to be puzzled over and studied and followed forever. As detectives Mills and Somerset investigate a series of murders based on the seven deadly sins, the psychotic yet soft-spoken John Doe always seems to be one step ahead of them. The admin would let go. That proves to be a fatal mistake for the detectives, who become an essential piece in the final part of Doe's plan. I feel like saying more, but I don't want to ruin the surprise. Any villain who's capable of concocting the twists and turns of this plan, and who's willing to die to see it all come to fruition, is an evil genius through and through. David, if you kill him, he will win. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. This is where we make the medicine. Come on! You gotta admit this is cool! Just like a movie! The robot will emerge dramatically, do some damage, throw in some screaming people, and just when all hope is lost, Syndrome will save the day! Long live the king. It's time to bring it to an end. Number one, Auric Goldfinger, Operation Grand Slam, Goldfinger. Do you expect me to talk? No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. Believe it or not, Pussy Galore was the least of James Bond's problems in this 007 film. And not even Odd Job could distract him from pinpointing the truth about Operation Grand Slam. I know Odd Job. I thought you always took your hat off to a lady. Organized by the literal gold digger named Auric Goldfinger, the plan is to irradiate the gold repository of Fort Knox. You kill 60,000 people uselessly. <laughs> American motorists kill that many every two years. Thus elevating the evil entrepreneur to become the global leader of gold distribution. Well, if you explode it in Fort Knox, the uh, entire gold supply of the United States will be radioactive for 57 years. 58 to be exact. Of course, it also means the certain destruction of the American economy. However, Bond has something to say about that. You disappoint me, Goldfinger. You know Operation Grand Slam simply won't work. Even so, Operation Grand Slam remains the most evil and brilliant of movie villain plans. Operation Grand Slam will be successful. You will be there to see for yourself. Too close to for comfort, I'm afraid. Do you agree with our list? I'll be back. What's your favorite movie villain evil plan? Do you hear me, Detective? I'm trying to tell you how much I admire you. For more mind-blowing top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. This ain't that kind of movie, bruv. Perfect.